Hello my dear friends, I am Sujoy and I am back with a new series of tutorials for you. In this series of tutorials, I am telling you how to do project management using network analysis. This is my 7th video in the series. In my previous 6 videos, I have explained some basic definitions and their use regarding project management, how to draw a network diagram, define types of question patterns in exam and how to use dummy activity to optimize a network. Do watch my previous videos, link to them is given in the video description below. So for now, I will tell you the first of the two most popular network analysis technique that is critical path method or CPM. Second one is PERT part or program evaluation and review technique. So this is my first video in CPM. We will start with solving a simple problem. Later, I will tell you how to solve most complex problem using critical path method. So today we will learn how to draw a network diagram from activity table, how to incorporate the respective cost values or duration values, how to find the critical path, also some properties of critical path. So let's start. So first don't look at the network diagram, I will tell you how to draw it. Just look at the table, there are three columns, activity, predecessor activity and duration. So first we will consider only activity and the predecessor activity for drawing the network diagram. Later we will incorporate the duration values. The predecessor activity means the activity which must be finished before another activity can start. For example, the activity A must be completed before the activity C can start. That is the meaning of predecessor activity. You will also notice the activity A and activity B don't have any predecessor activity. That means they are the starting activities. So first let us draw the network diagram. For that we will start with drawing a circle. Let us give it a number 1. Our circle represents an event. This circle represents the starting event. And all the activities starting from the starting event are called the starting activities. So we will draw our activity A and activity B from event 1. So let us draw activity A. and activity B. And end of activity is another event. Let us say it is event 2. And end of activity B is also another event. Let us say it is event 3. So activity A and B are done. Next the activity C. It has the predecessor activity of A. That means the activity A must be completed before activity C can start and activity A is completed at event 2. So activity C will start from event 2. So let's draw activity C. And end of activity C, it's event 4. Next the activity D which has the predecessor activity of B. So activity B ends at event 3. So D will start from event 3. Let's draw the activity D. And activity D ends at event 5. Next, the activity E. It has the predecessor activity of B. That means it will also start from event 3. Let's draw activity E. Activity E ends at event 6. Next the activity F, but there is a catch before drawing activity F. Before drawing any activity, just look at least 3 activities forward in the table and check whether the activity you are going to draw is predecessor activity or not of any upcoming activity. So you can see the activity F is the predecessor activity of activity I along with G and H. That means all three activities F, G and H must be completed before the activity I can start. Also, the activities F, G and H must finish at an event and from that event the activity I will start. So in that situation, just use a little caution for drawing the network diagram. So now we will draw the activity F which has the predecessor activity of C. That means it will start from event 4. Activity F ends at event 7. 
So our activity F ends at event 7. So for the sake of simplicity, if we can merge the activity G and activity H at event 7, so we can start doing activity I from event 7. So let's draw the activity G which has the predecessor activity of D. So G will start from event 5 and will end at event 7. Next activity H which has the predecessor activity of E. E ends at event 6. So H will start from event 6 and will end at event 7. So since all our activities F, G and H are completed at event 7, we can draw activity I from event 7. So activity I will start from event 7 and will end at event 8. So that's it. We have successfully completed drawing the network diagram which looks similar to this one. This is our fair network diagram. Our next step, now we will consider the duration values. The activity A has the duration of 2. Let's say it's week. That means the activity A takes 2 weeks to finish. So we will write the respective duration values next to each activity. So activity A's duration is 2 weeks written next to it. Activity B's duration is 2 weeks written next to it. So just write all the respective duration values next to each activity and you will get something like this. Our next step. Now we will write down all the paths starting from our start event that is event 1 ending to our end event that is event 8 and their respective total cost values. So our first path is A starting from event 1, C, F and I ending at event 8. This is ACFI which has the total cost of 2 for activity A plus 3 for activity C plus 6 for activity F plus 9 for activity I. That is equals to 20 weeks. Our next path is B, D, G, I which has the total cost of 2 for B plus 8 for D plus 7 for G plus 9 for I. That is equals to 26 and our last path is B, E, H and I which has the total cost of 2 for B, 5 for E plus 2 for H plus 9 for I that is equals to 18. So we have successfully write down all the paths. Our next step is to check the largest value among the total cost values. So our largest value is 26 which belongs to our path BDGI which is our critical path. It represents the total time or the minimum time to complete the project. And now some properties of critical path. Property number 1. The delay in any activity in critical path will delay the total project. For example, if we delay the activity B by one week then our project completion time will increase by one week. So it will finish in 27 weeks instead of 26 weeks as of now. Property number 2. Activities in critical path are called the critical activities. So our critical activities are B, D, G and I. Property number 3. Critical activities have zero float. Float is the variable time associated with each activity. It represents the time we can delay for starting that particular activity without delaying the total completion time of project. That means, let's say the float for activity B is 4 weeks. That means, the activity B can be delayed by 4 weeks without delaying the project completion time. The float value is reserved for emergency purposes. Property number 4. There may be more than one critical path in a network diagram. I will make a video on more than one critical path. So just visit my channel regularly. Property number 5. The critical path is the longest sequence of activities since it takes the longest time to finish. Property number 6. Critical path represents the minimum time to complete the project because all the activities in critical path have zero float. That means they don't have any variable time or they don't have any chance of delay. So the activities in critical path 
taking the minimum time they can take so in that sense it takes the minimum time to complete the project along the critical path so friend this was my video on critical path method how was the video let me know in the comments below i will upload more videos in the series so don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel so that when i upload my next video you get an email if you subscribe and don't forget to like and share the video because knowledge is meant to be shared i have uploaded videos on statistics numerical methods business and financial mathematics operational research computer science electrical engineering and other app reviews india travel tourism street foods life hacks and many other topics and a series of videos showing how to use your scientific calculator scale effects and on es and fx82 ms to do math easily you must check my calculator videos so thanks for watching see you in my next video and still then stay connected by subscribing